Yeah? And it's talking about the kutub, the mountains, the nails. It's not meaning those mountains. Swearing by them. When it's talking about time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not meaning this time. 24 hours, Allah is swearing by 24 hours. This is 24 hours to us. What about to the cat? They have a different sense of time, right? What about to other creations that we are saying it doesn't have a life? Our Lord is the Lord of life. He doesn't create anything that doesn't have a life. It has a life, but not in a way that we understand. Yes? The baby that is in the mother's womb has a different sense of time. So it's different. It's not meaning that. It's meaning something else. We may only say, for instance, what we heard Shah Fendi say, and according to how he wants to open it, we may. Not necessary, we don't open it. That time, again, is referring to mankind, not just any man. To the master of the time, Sahibul Waqt. Again, is referring to Hazrat Insan, but that Hazrat Insan, that is Insan Kamil, Allah swearing by him. So that mountain is not referring to the mountain that you think you see here, Catskills, or in Alaska, or in Daastan. Daastan is a land of Da, <laughs> land of mountains. We're trying to look for the mountain of Kaf over there, it's not. Shaykh Fani had said, Holy Prophet is saying, imagine that this this world it is like a ring throw this ring into an endless desert it will disappear yes the mountain of Kaf is that endless desert so we're not even talking about other skies we're not talking about the heavens. We're not talking about the arsh. We're not talking about Sidratul Munta. Everything swallows the next one. So it is enough that our Shaykh is there and he's sending us support from there. And it is where. The awliya Allah, they are getting ready, the friends of Allah. They are getting ready for the event that is going to happen, that is going to end everything that is in creation. That event is not just between East and West or this world. It's going to be the end of all worlds. It's going to be start a new beginning. And that's just that end is just a beginning of the real end that is going to come. Because however many Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent mankind to, the worlds, how many Adams, it's all coming to a close. This is the time. Which is now, it is even more important for us to understand what is the uh, most important thing Woman, next time you're not going to put your shoes over there if you are going to exit from the other side and sending the kids to go back and forth. Either you're going to use your brains and you're going to think a little bit, so that is going to start, take all your shoes before and move over there, or you're not going to come at all. Not you, not me, we have the right to disturb the uh, sohbat that is happening. Or you're going to be patient and you're going to sit somewhere quiet for a little bit until the sohbet finishes and to take your shoes. But you're not going to send the kid back and forth like this. Aquasis. So how are we going to talk about the mountain of Kaf when we're still being busy about where to put the shoes? Hmm? How are we going to talk about high level stuff like that when people are not even understanding basic adapt? 
forget about understanding how to enter into a jami, a masjid. You don't know there's manners to entering into a, into a place, into a mosque, into a jami, into a derga. People forget about that. They don't even know how to enter into a toilet. There is a way. Either you enter into it the way shaitan enters, or you're going to enter into it the way that Allah's friends, they enter. So everything has a manners to it. Yes, that's why we cannot talk so much about it. Because you talk about it, you hear, what are you going to do with it? You know, eh? then what? Are you working towards entering into there? You don't even have to enter into a toilet. And now because we're a jamaat, you cannot say, oh, I know. That one doesn't know. That one is bad, I'm good. It's finished once you start thinking. Because in the jamaat, you're only as strong as the weakest person. You understand? So, these things we have to watch. Because as I was saying, now if the whole world is heading towards that, that clash, that huck, it is rising. The split is happening everywhere that our Shaykh had spoken about for decades. Huh? There's going to be a split. Whole world is separating. I remember very clearly twenty-three years ago when I was with Shah Fandi. And he said this world will divide into two. This is twenty-three years ago. He said division is going to happen between truth and falsehood. Not between Muslims and non-Muslims, truth and falsehood. And he says, but before they separate, he says, before right and wrong separates, the religions are going to separate. Inside every religion, there are people who are sincere and people who are not sincere. They start separating. They're no longer happy to be just together and to tolerate each other. They start separating. You will see that in all religions now, they're separating. You see it very clearly. You see that in Saudi Arabia. You see that in India. Yes or no? You see that in the West and you see in the East. But he said, before the religions start to separate, first, he's saying, inside the religion of Islam, the Muslims are going to separate, the sincere and the insincere ones. And he says, before the Muslims are separating, the tariqats are going to separate. And the first tariqat to make that separation will be the Naqshbandi tariqat. There will be a separation. We're asking to be on the right way. Amen. As long as we're holding on to our Shaykh, holding on to our Grand Shaykh, there's no reason. Then you're going to see what are you busy with. You say you're holding on to them. So many are holding on to them, but 24 hours they're busy with slander and backbiting and destroying people's lives. Cheating and lying, stealing from them. Yes or no? Destroying lives. But they're saying we're following, we're holding on tight. You're not holding on tightly, you're not even holding on. You're just putting the title there calling yourself this, this, or this. And we're seeing now, as Shah Fani had said, the whole world now is moving. It's like a huge, big truck, 20-wheeler truck, 18-wheeler truck, that very powerful engine, and all of mankind is inside that truck, and it's heading right off the cliff, and the awliya Allah, the friends of Allah, are holding it, holding it tightly, so that, they don't fall off the cliff and everything is destroyed, but the engine is so powerful in this Ahir Zaman that if the Awliya Allah, they don't let go, they'll be dragged to go down with that truck over that cliff too. So you see, in certain places, they pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back, because it's too strong. And the permission is, the authority is the uh, order is, don't hold on too tightly to that. They have to hold on to you if they want. But when you see it, 
heading. Like, for example, the UN you see, they're very excited these days. Everything is a sign. They're excited about the Titanic. Uh, but they're not understanding the Titanic, the captain, or the architect, or the, the one who built the ship. He is the one who called it Titanic, and he is the one who is challenging to Allah. He's saying, not even you can destroy this. Allah is saying, me? I'm not going to do anything. But that thing that you don't pass off as nothing, that thing that you can drink, that thing that you can boil, that thing that you don't take for nothing, that thing in its severe form of an iceberg just sitting there, maybe for millions of years, not moving, but waiting for that day, that thing that is not doing anything, you are going to come and crush into it. And that's exactly what happened. So this whole world now is crushing into that iceberg. It's not just crushing, it's already crushed. Now things are twisting, things are popping, things are... When the ship is going through the iceberg like that, is that the time to sit and to discuss? Is that the time to sit and to discuss? Discussion should have been before. Before you even hit it, you can discuss. Actually, if you are going to discuss when it's rushing to hit it, you don't discuss. That time you already say, we have to jump out. We have to jump out. We cannot now talk. But now this whole ship it is already hitting and it's going deeper and deeper. It's ripping apart. And what are the people doing? What are our leaders doing? What are the Muslim leaders doing? What are the scholars doing? They're still talking about the stars. They're still talking about books. They are making people to be sleepy that no, we are what iceberg? There's nothing out there. We're still living the best of time. There is time enough. Maybe Allah is saying there is no time. Any prophet saying, don't worry, you have time? No prophet says. Even Hazrat Nuh he's saying for hundreds of years, there is no time, there is no time, there is no time. You are going to die, there is no time. Even if you live for a thousand years, you are going to die. Tomorrow maybe, there is no time. And he lived for over 900 years. Then, when he asked and Allah gave, answered his prayers, then he knows, really there is no time. Because the ship is already going to hit the iceberg, the world is going to sink. So the Ahliya Allah, our Shah has been speaking about this for decades. This is what is happening right now, when you see everything. Don't think this is going to get better, it's going to get worse. But better or worse also, don't judge by these eyes. We have to go by here. <coughs> it may look like things are going to get better, but it's not. So it's hitting now. It's ripping itself apart. And Tarikat should be the first one to save mankind. You are not going to be saved by your knowledge. When a ship is sinking, and when there is, when the ship is sinking, do you see people who rely on their knowledge, let's say of swimming? Do you ever hear, if it's presented to them, a live boat, or you can swim, they say, I want to swim? Do you ever hear that? In fact, it is law, everybody gets on the live boat, if there is room. So your knowledge is not going to save you. You have to hold on to that lifeboat. But the prophets and the saints, they're not offering lifeboats. What are they offering? They're offering a ship the size of the ship of Nuh. It is enough to fit all of humanity, you understand? All of humanity. There's no limited space there. But how many 
are saying that I'm preparing myself to enter into that shift. And how many are saying and training others, no, 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 you don't have to. Even if it's going to fall, mm, I'm going to teach you how to swim. Even the strongest fighters, strongest swimmers, strongest sportsmen and athletes, when the ship is going down, they don't rely on their knowledge. Because they know what we're going to enter into is an endless ocean. It will swallow us. And we don't know what is there. It's the intelligence means I have to get into the lifeboat. Oh, but the lifeboat looks really small and it doesn't matter, it will save your life. That's how people look at awliyaullah. They say, what, this one? It's so small. This one doesn't look too fancy. It doesn't look very strong. Separation has occurred. It's happening right now. Choose the lesser of two evils. It's between shar and shar. You have to choose the lesser shar. May Allah keep us in safety, <laughs> making us to hold on to our shaykh, inshallah. <laughs> Not for us to let go. Al-Fatiha. <laughs>